Hello, guys. What's up? Okay, can you see all this weird stuff in front of me? Well, if you didn't read the title, uh, then you probably don't know what all this stuff is. But uh, I thought I'd let you guys in on one of my other weird hobbies. Um, I breed goliath beetles. So uh, these are goliath beetles. I'll give you a closer look at them uh, soon. Uh, but they are one of the largest beetles in the world, possibly the heaviest beetle in the world. Uh, also one of just one of the largest insects in the world. And they're incredible. And you can legally now have them in the United States. Uh, I had to wait most of my life until they became legal. Uh, it's the, the reason they are legal is because they are protein eating insects. So as a larva and then as an adult, they just lick sugar off of trees. So they don't, like if there's a, a leaky spot in a tree, like sap coming out, um, in the natural environment, they just lick the sap. They lick sugar as an adult beetle. And as uh, the grub, they are protein eaters, which means they eat other insects and other protein sources. The reason I was looking over here is because uh, the grubs, uh, the larva, I actually feed this moist, moist and meaty dog food. It's so simple. I'll show you more about that when the time comes. Um, but they're awesome pets. Um, they're a little bit difficult to breed, but I have figured it out. I've done it for a couple years, and I thought I would make a video series about the different steps to breeding them. Uh, I'm kind of jumping in the middle, though, because I've, I've never made a video about them before, um, but I'm kind of just jumping in the middle. So right now, the the grubs are have went down into, they call it the pupil cell building stage. So actually, I should just go through the life cycle first, and then I'll tell you where I'm at, and I'm going to give a lot of detail about this particular stage that I'm at. Uh, you don't have to stick around and watch the whole thing if you don't want, but if you're interested in keeping these as pets, or if you already breed insects or beetles, you'll, you'll find this interesting and awesome. Um, so the life cycle takes about a year, so you can, you can expand your colony once a year you can breed and the whole cycle takes about a year. So basically after mating, the females will burrow underground and lay their eggs. So I keep them in containers like this. I use these for a few different things, but I, I have deep substrate in these containers uh, for the females to lay their eggs. And they make this little ball of dirt somehow. I don't, I don't know if people even know how they do it. Maybe with their back legs. They make a perfect little sphere um, in a hollow spot inside this little ball of dirt and inside there they'll lay an egg. Let me see if I can find a picture. I'll post it now. So the eggs are actually pretty big in the insect world. I'd say they're, you know, they're a pretty good size egg for um, being an insect egg. Uh, not as big as a pea, but you know, half the size of a pea. Um, and then they take a, they take a couple weeks to hatch. I think 10 to 14 days, 10 to 15 days to hatch, depending on the temperature. And they'll hatch into a little grub. So you guys know what grubs are. Like they look like a little wax worm or something. And at that point, they will start growing fast. They are ravenous. Uh, they will eat mostly, well, I just feed them this moist dog food. Uh, some other people do, you know, cat foods and dry cat food, but then they mist it with water. Um, this stuff's already got moisture in it. I think it's 33% moisture. Um, they like a high protein. More protein, the better. I think this stuff's only like 18%, um, but that was enough. So, well, let's see. Does it say? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It says somewhere. But this is enough moisture that uh, you don't have to give the grubs any water. They just stay in kind of a moist... Um, I just keep them in peat moss, uh, and kind of moist peat moss, and every three to seven days... Uh, depending on how motivated you are, you feed them a few chunks of the of the food. And so they'll go through three stages. They call it L1, L2, L3. That's their shedding stages. So they'll they'll puff up, you know, the grub will keep growing, getting bigger, and then they'll molt their skin, and then they're called an L2, and then they become an L3. And these things can get giant. Um, I've had them nearly 100 grams, which is like 
very, very big for uh, an insect grub. I'll show you a picture of that. Yeah, that was a couple pictures because they're so cool. So they're so awesome. I don't know. I just love them. I think they're cute. Some people might think that's disgusting or my daughter even thinks uh, they're cute. One of them pictures was her holding it uh, in her hand. Uh, so they're, they're pretty awesome. So once the grubs get to this full size, oh, it's windy. One of my beetles might fly away. They're real light when they're dry. Uh, these are expired beetles that um, I've raised offspring. I'll show you a close-up of them. Um, oh yeah, once the grubs get full size in that L3 stage, they will, I actually keep them in containers like, well, usually smaller than this, but sometimes I'll keep them in a container like this with about this much peat moss. And the, the grub will go into what they call the wandering stage. So it will come to the surface of the soil and just start cruising around trying to escape because it's trying to look for a spot to build a pupil cell. So they actually, once they find a spot they like, they'll go under the ground and they'll build this awesome pupil cell. This is a broken open one, an old one. Uh, it'll look like a big dirt egg, you know? Let me, well, I, I'm gonna be doing a close up soon. So I'll, I'll be showing this too. Um, and inside of it, they will change from a grub into this pupa, this pupil stage. It looks like an alien. I'll show you this close up too. Uh, and then they'll sit in here for five or six months until in nature the rainy season comes. And once the, the moisture seeps through this pupil cell uh, in nature, that triggers them to hatch and come up as an adult. So it's very cool. So in here, I've had some of my grubs started going down three months ago. I call it going down because I put, I, I get these containers ready. So when one of the grubs goes into that wandering phase, I have to have, a, I have to try to mimic a perfect scenario for them to build this. So I know how to do that now. I figured it all out. Uh, so we can set one up today so I can show you because I have one more grub that needs to go down and build up cell. So, and these ones have been, already went down three months ago. So we can actually open these up today on video and dig in there and remove the pupil cell. Because I like to store the pupil, pupil cells outside, like where I can control the moisture level better. Not outside of my house, but outside of these containers. So I like to put them in a group setting like this in a bigger bin where I can control the environment better. Because I can't tell by looking at this how dry it is in here or how wet. So I hope I'm not rambling too much, but this is a, it's a kind of specific topic and there's not a lot of information on it. There's really no books about it. There's a couple outdated articles, but they're outdated. So if you're into this sort of thing, I'll just keep rambling. Uh, so yeah, we're going to get to see if either any three of these has a completed pupil cell. And if there is, that's good news. Very exciting. Um, the survival rate of this stage is pretty low, like as low as like 50% from going down all the way to hatching into a healthy adult. Only about 50% make it because so many things can go wrong at this stage. So I'm really excited to see if we can get at least two complete pupil cells out of these. And I'm guessing at least one, something will have gone wrong. Sometimes the grub won't quite finish it. So it'll be really weak or the grub doesn't like the conditions. So it won't build it at all. But if we can get two out of three, I'll be really happy. So let's get you guys a close up on the beetles and see what kind of what they look like and stuff. And then we'll set up, I'll show you how I set up one of these uh, pupil cell containers. And then we're gonna open these up and dig out some of the crazy, the crazy pupil cells. Okay, let me grab the camera. All right, let's take a close look at some of these guys. So for first off, look at how big this is. This is one of the males that I raised from scratch from an egg from the previous version. Actually, all these are ones that I've raised from scratch. Uh, this is a big old male. This is kind of the classic coloring pattern. So it's got this um, maroon uh, 
back shell back wing covers or whatever uh let me slide i'll just slide this over to show the other stuff this guy obviously he's got some legs broken off but i could fix that with glue um if i wanted to mount it in a display case um but i just the reason i put this one here is because they can come in this other color morph people have kind of morphed them to have these different colors like this so in nature they're kind of more like this with the maroon back but um this is a beautiful, got that really white back, and it's got some patches of maroon. So some people call these the koi fish of the insect world because the breeders are trying to get these other color morphs by, you know, selective breeding. So it's kind of cool. They're, you know, like they do with koi fish, they try to get different patterns. So, um, so here's a big male that I raised. Uh, this was probably an over 80 millimeters. Uh, he's kind of falling apart. I got to mount some of these. I had, I kept some of these out in the garage to dry them and like um, mice came in and like tore them all apart. So whoops. So there's a big male. Uh, here's what the females look like here. I'll just show two of them. So these are nice morphed females with a lot of white. So these are females that bred these next generation. So see, this one's kind of smaller. The females are smaller. Let me put my finger here. There's still a very big beetle. Okay, I hope I don't drop this all off. Okay, so here is uh, some pupil cells. Look, here is one that didn't quite make it all the way to a beetle, but he turned, wow, it's really hard to see on here. Let me, let me up the lighting a little for this guy. Oh, it's kind of scary. So it looks like an alien in there. Um, Let's get a focus here. There we go. So yeah, for some reason, this guy never came out of his pupa shell. So I opened it up and for some reason, he just died in this stage. He might've got too dry or too wet. He probably got too wet, actually. They usually don't get too dry. Um, he probably got too moist and got a little fungus or mildew. So that's what the, the crazy, that's how they sit in there. They sit on their backs like that uh, for five or six months inside the, pupil cell and all of a sudden they'll shed into the adult beetle and they'll, they have to fold their wings in so it's really important to treat these pupa cells correctly so everything happens like it's supposed to in nature um, here is a nice big pupa cell look at how smooth the grub makes this so it ingests what it needs into its body and mixes it with some goo and acid or something some kind of gluey spit and it spits it out into this shape and it's hard to see on this one but uh let's see they even make they even make let me see they make a ridge around it there's a ridge right here that runs all the way around the egg and that's to strengthen it see how it's bumped up right here it runs all the way around and this strengthens it from crushing isn't that incredible it's somehow evolved to do that we'll probably be able to see it if we dig up a a new one but see how smooth and perfect it is in here i can't believe the grub can do that it's incredible okay now it's really bright so let's go back to normal here um so yeah let's let's move on to yeah that guy's falling apart uh let's move on to how i prepare these uh pupa cell building containers for the people that um care enough <laughs> so obviously this video is not, might not be for everybody but if you're interested in insects or someday you might want to do this uh i thought i would put that information out there so okay let's i'll get the camera set up to um set up one of these chambers okay let's get right to it so when uh, when one of them adult grubs starts going into that wandering phase where it's trying to escape its container, then I quickly set up the pupil cell building container. So these are from the Dollar Tree. You can get these for $1.25 and they're awesome. They're perfect size because you actually fill this completely to the top. Uh, they want a deep spot to dig. So this mixture is a very important. This is a mixture of pretty much 50% peat moss and 50% sand. Uh, you can do 60% peat moss and 40% sand. That's probably about what this is. And you don't want, you, you just want it kind of 
damp, just a little bit damp. See, I can't squeeze water out of it or nothing. Um, see, it still kind of falls through my hands like this. It's It doesn't really stay clumped very well. So this is just kind of moist. I'm going to make a big mess is what I'm going to do now. So uh, well, what I do is I, I fill it. I fill it all the way to the top. Here, you know what? I could do this with my hands better. I like doing my projects outside because I can just make a big mess. As you've probably seen in my other videos, I, I'm a little messy. Oops, I hope I have enough here. So what I do is I, I fill it to the top loosely and then cram it down. Push it down pretty hard. They want a good spot to build that hollow that hollow spot for that pupil cell. So they want, uh, they gotta be able to create that hollow spot without it collapsing. So we're gonna pack that down. So see, it's about three fourths full of packed down. Ooh, I forgot something. I forgot a step. Start over. Geez, I'm bad at this. Okay, I forgot one step. There's an important thing you have to add. I'm adding clay. So this is uh, natural clay that I dug out of my ground. Underneath my topsoil, I have this nice yellow clay. You can usually find yellow clay under your topsoil or gray clay. Uh, a lot of times by water sources and lakes and ponds, you can dig around and there'll be gray clay. You gotta find some kind of a clay. So I add a couple chunks of it at the bottom and I'll explain why. But uh, I add a couple chunks at, a, at the bottom and then um, I'll fill this back up in a second off, off camera. Um, so what happens is the grubs are looking for the exact right mixture of things to fill their belly or whatever the, that they want. They got to consume the ingredients to make this. So they're going to consume peat moss. They're going to consume the sand. But what they're looking for, which they didn't know about this for many years, that's why some of them articles are outdated. Um, they're looking for like a fine material, like either like a fine silt or like a clay. It's really fine grained. And this is perfect for making the pupil cells or one of the ingredients the grubs are looking for. So by adding this in, the grub's going to kind of smell this earthy smell of the clay. He's going to go find it and chew on it. And he's going to spend less time wandering around trying to escape and losing weight and getting weak. Instead, he's going to go down, eat the clay, and get started right away building. And that's what we want. And that's how we get these big giant adults because they're not wasting time wandering around and trying to escape. They start building right away. So that was the breakthrough. So, okay, let me fill this back up. Okay, let's see. Okay, we're pretty much back to where when I forgot to put the clay in there. So we have that packed down and we're gonna put the rest, we're gonna put the rest on top. It looks like I'm gonna be just a tiny, uh, the, the stuff on top we can leave pretty loose. Um, okay, normally I, I didn't have quite enough, but that's okay. Cause the grub I'm putting in here is pretty small. I only have one grub left. She's a kind of a, might not make it. It's kind of like the, a, what would it be? The runt? <laughs> it's just a little, a little female. Um, she's not quite ready to go down yet, but she will any day now. Uh, so she, I don't want to disturb her right now. Otherwise I'd show her, show her to you. But um, I'm, I want to have this ready for her. So it's usually I would fill this all the way to the top. Uh, and then I just put a little hole. I'll put some more clay because she'll come up here and explore around. She'll be um, crawling up here trying to escape, but she'll find these clay chunks Another spot she'll go to try to escape and check it out, she'll go all the way to the bottom because I want her to run into the clay because she's going to think, ooh, that's convenient. And she will chew on that and then she'll get started finding a spot to build. So I just make a little hole in the side like this and I stick the I stick the big grub, the head down, and they'll, they'll dig down in there. And then, well, I have, I have a couple chunks left. I'll just throw them in there. Uh, my whole yard is made out of it under the topsoil it's all yellow clay so then uh just close it off once the grub's in there you don't add any food no no more water no nothing just put the date on it that you put the grub in there and then put it somewhere undisturbed in like a closet dark area 
for two to three months. Don't check on it for two to three months. Um, we, we did exactly three months. Tomorrow, this will be three months on these. You can see I've, I've used the same ones over and over again for different, different ones. Uh, so you know what? I think, I think we're ready to, to open these. Let me take a tiny little break and slam some coffee. And I'm getting excited. Oh, come on, guys. I hope there's at least two nice pupil cells. They might not be quite as big as some of these others um, because I only fed these ones once every seven days, the grubs. And that was kind of, I did it as an experiment and I was kind of a little more lazy about it. So I wanted to prove that you don't have to, people say you have to feed them every two days, the grubs. And I'm like, no, you don't. So I used to do three to four days. So I, I did a whole batch every seven days and the grubs still got pretty big. So we'll have to see how big the uh, cells got. I hope they got a good size. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, guys, now for the exciting part. We get to peek in here and see if any of these successfully made their their pupil cell. So let's do the middle one first. I just have a bowl of peat moss back here that we're gonna set the pupil cells in just so we can see them while we're messing with them. Now, we could open this and there could be just a dead grub right on top. So I'm hoping that doesn't happen. Okay, that's good. I don't see a dead grub yet. I can see where uh, she crawled or he or she crawled around. I just realized I'm going to make a big mess here. Hmm. Okay, maybe I'm going to I'm going to use this bowl for digging out the soil. So what I'm going to do is start taking this top layer off. Let's make sure you guys can see me. It's sunny. The sun's kind of shining in, so it's kind of the lighting's a little weird. Okay, they they never build the cell right at the top here, so I'm being kind of aggressive. Once I get closer down, Okay, I felt a tunnel that it made. Ooh, I don't know if I like that. I can feel a tunnel that it made that goes way down. Uh-oh. Okay. Sometimes that's okay, but I don't know. Okay, I'm going to keep digging. Either way, we should be able to find the dead grub if the grub did not make it. Okay, I'm hoping to feel something soon. Jeez, I'm pretty far down. It might have made it way on the bottom. I'm still, there's still a little bit of hope. Wow, it, it made it all the way on the bottom. Okay, I'm trying to loosen up the pupil cell. There we go. Hopefully I didn't break it. And I leave it orientated just like it is. It'll even be tilted. This is a really small one. Is it still recording? Did it just get super dark or am I blind? Is it because the sun went away? What is happening? I don't get it. Something bad was happening. I don't know why the screen got so dark. Okay, well, uh, so the, here's a tiny little pupil cell. Let's see, let's get, uh, you, you wanna leave it orientated the same way it was, kind of like a reptile egg or uh, turtle egg. You're supposed to leave it orientated. It's got a flat spot. Um, let's see, oh yeah. Wow, this is actually a really small, Pupil cell. That lighting was really screwed up. I might have to cut this part out. Okay, we got one. Let's, I'm gonna set it in this container for now. Okay, well, at least we got one out of there. That was a really small one though, so that must have been a small grub. Okay, let's do a next one now that the lighting is not so screwed up. I wonder what happened there. It got like really black. I know the sun went away, but it shouldn't have got that dark. Okay. I'm gonna, actually I'm gonna get rid of this. I'm gonna pour this into my flower bed, this extra soil, which is right here, over my railing of my deck. Okay, hopefully we find a bigger, 
a bigger one, but that's okay. It's just good that it was uh, fully formed. It seems healthy. I could feel that there was a, the grub was uh, transformed probably uh, into that pupil pupil stage. Ooh, good. I can feel I can feel the pupil cell. Uh, let's see. See if I can get it out of here without taking too long. So I'm just digging around it with my fingers. I'm going to leave it intact. There we go. This is another small one. So I guess feeding the grubs every uh, seven days, so far the pupil cells are much smaller. So that means there will be smaller adults. But isn't aren't these cool? I don't want to tip it, but I'm, I, you can kind of clean it off like this, like rub off the extra. But uh, pretty cool. That's It's healthy. Let me see if I can feel it. Sometimes you can feel uh, the pupa in there rolling back and forth. So we'll set that one in the container there. Okay, let's see if we can... That's two for two. That's good. Okay, I can feel... I can feel one. I've already kind of dug around it. Wow, we got three pupil cells. Three for three. Geez, these are really small though. Oh gosh, I guess that was an experiment to see if feeding them every seven days would really affect the size of the adults. So I guess they do need to eat very often. So when you're feeding your um, grubs, I think every two to four days is the magic number. Three might be the best, but uh, so here's another tiny one. Can I feel? I can't feel nothing moving in there. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go grab one more container because these might be females. The female beetles are a lot smaller. I'm going to go grab one or two more containers that if there's ones ready. Uh, and I kind of want to see if any of them are bigger. So let's put this guy up. Oops, let's put him in there. Okay. I'll stop this for a second. I'm going to go grab a couple more containers as long as they've at least been sitting for two months. Be right back. Okay, I'm back. I couldn't help myself. I grabbed three more. <laughs> this is fun. It's like unearthing treasure. Okay, here we go. Oh, yeah, it built it. It's got a flat spot from the side of the container, which means it actually has a little window in it. Oof, I don't want any gnats or anything getting in there. So... I can see that it successfully, there's a little window in here. You guys probably can't see it. Let me make sure you can see. So see, oh yeah, see in there that little light brown? That is, oh yeah, it, it turned into a successful pupa. So there's a successful pupa in this pupil cell. And this one's a little bit bigger Still pretty small, but we are having good luck. Four pupil cells. Okay. We got another one, guys. This is awesome. We got 100% ratio for pupil cells. See if I can... Oh, yeah. Yep, this one turned into a... Now the sun's back out. At least it didn't turn pitch black, right? Okay. Another small one. So I guess they're all going to be kind of small on this generation. I can feel it. I can feel it rocking inside there. So that one also turned into successfully into a pupa because I can feel. Oops. What happened? Yeah, I can feel it rocking back and forth in there. Um, so that's OK. So that's awesome. So we are. Let's see. Five for five. They're all small. It's crazy. We're going to have some really small glide beetles. Okay, let me get, let me do one more. Last. Okay, I can feel, I can feel another one. Wow, we are awesome. Six for six. Here we go. Step behind the camera to make sure you guys can see. Maybe it wasn't a good idea to be in the sun like this. There we go. That one's a little bigger. They're all pretty uniformly small. Obviously, 
that's a big insect <laughs> pupil cell in general, but for a goliath beetle, this is kind of a, it's kind of a little smaller. Wow, six for six? Can I feel him? That one I cannot feel tipping. A couple of them I can't feel tip. Um, so they're either very tight, compact in there, or it's also possible that they die inside there and are kind of stuck to the inside. Because the only thing I'm kind of worried about with these smaller ones is you want the grub and whatnot to have a lot of energy. This takes a lot of energy to turn into an adult beetle. So it might have exhausted itself building the pupil cell and then died inside there. But we'll see. Let's take a closer look at all six. I'll set up the camera. Okay, look at how wonderful these guys are. Yeah, we got six for six. So see, I put these uh, popsicle sticks in to mark the date that the grub went down to start building. Or the, the, the date that I put the grub into that big container to build its pupil cell. Uh, here's one you can kind of see that line coming across. Uh, but uh, let's take let's take a little closer look at one. I, I moved out of the sun, so maybe this was... Sorry if that was a bad idea to, to film in the sun. I'm still learning how to be a good YouTuber. So still all pretty small cells. So it'll be very interesting to see if these guys um, make it and hatch out into adults. So in this stage, I store them in just slightly, ever so slightly damp peat moss. This is almost kind of dry feeling. Um, and what you do is you just kind of bury them. Yeah, you can leave them sticking out a little if you want. Um, some air air is good for them. So here, I'm just going to gently, lightly cover them like that. And basically just don't let this peat moss dry completely out. It can get pretty dry. And I also use, let me find the lid. Oh, here it is. Okay, so I pop this lid on, and as you can see, there we go, that works. Um, I put the, I, I drill holes in the lid, and then I put little screens over them. I glued a, hot glued screens over them so gnats can't get in. I don't want any other little bugs getting in there and messing with them. So, and now we can stick this, I keep this in the same dark closet, just on the floor, and after about five or six months, you can actually open up them pupil cells and get the beetles out. Uh, and I can show you how to do that when the time comes. So step by step, I will do updates and do thorough, you know, explanations of what I'm doing like I did today. So sorry if it was too much rambling, but if you're still watching, that means you were interested and you might want to do this in the future. So so keep an eye on my channel, like and subscribe, because I'll be doing updates for the whole next generation of these beetles. And maybe next time we'll try to raise some super giants. These are all going to be really small, so it'll be kind of funny. Uh, and we can take the offspring from these small ones, and I will still be able to raise them into huge monsters if we put a little extra time in. So thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.